Welcome to this Wednesday evening service and I'm so grateful that you've joined me and you know on these Wednesdays for those of you that have watched this before that I love to start this time in prayer and I want to encourage you also if you know somebody who you think hey this could really help them then forward this to them and encourage them you know that they can watch you can make all the difference to people when they receive a word from the Lord but before we open the scriptures today Let's enter into the presence of the Lord. You know, Smith Wicklesworth says that the Holy Spirit draws us or awakens us or calls us into the presence of the Lord, into the consciousness of His presence. But he says, by faith, we can also come into that. So it's both ways. It's the Lord coming to us and us coming to Him. And of course, the Bible is full of that, where the Lord says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. What a wonderful thing. And you know, it says in Isaiah 55, let us draw near to him while he may be found and let us call upon him while he's near. You know, that is the great gospel that we have for the world today, that we can come to God as we are because of the blood of Jesus, because of the mercy of our great Savior, the Lamb of God, who sits on the throne of God, beckoning us to draw near. And we can call upon Him because it says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And in Psalm 34, it says, and they looked to Him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed or disappointed. When you look to the Lord and say, oh, my Savior, I'm so hungry for your grace, for your love, for your mercy, for your goodness to fill and flood my being. Oh, Lord, that I may be comforted by your blessed presence and know you, perceive you, recognize you, and acknowledge you in all that I am and say and do. Oh, Father, I'm so grateful for your love for me, for your presence abiding in me day and night, never leaving me and that I may live in the consciousness of your presence because you've cleansed my heart from consciousness of sin so that I may know you, perceive you, recognize you. Oh, Father, such riches, such love, such grace is far beyond what I could even comprehend, Lord, that I can live in communion with you and in fellowship with you and that nothing could separate me from your great love that you give me so generously in Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father, I worship you together with all the precious people watching online. Come, lift your hands to heaven. It says in Lamentations chapter 3, lifting up our hearts and our hands to God. Or as David would say in Psalm 63, your loving kindness is better to me than life itself. Therefore, my lips will praise you and I will lift up my hands unto your name. Rebi alondora do cosa premendere de casa la parandere de ca trebile sholo loco trebile prendere di sha reme che tele le poco sha che tere dia tramabra andoro do so premendere de ca Father I thank you for filling us with the Holy Spirit day and night so that we will never hunger or thirst because you satisfy us to the uttermost you are more than enough you are all sufficient in you I'm complete Lord lacking nothing Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for calming us with your blessed presence and giving us that wonderful rest of your presence that we're not agitated by anything, but we're in the river of your spirit flowing from your throne of grace. Oh, Lord, I worship you. I love this river. I love living in the river of your spirit. I love it flowing from my heart, flowing from my innermost being. Oh, hallelujah, thank you for your anointing, teaching us, instructing us, and guiding and reminding us of your word. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You know, to pray is just one of the most wonderful, wonderful privileges that we are given as we become children of God. Where in Romans 8, it says, our spirit cries out, Abba, Father, our spirit. Our spirit made alive with Christ now acknowledges God as our Father and we as His children. You know, I've started a series this month on the Wednesdays and Sundays. He restores 
better than before. And I really believe in this. Virginia and I, we've seen this in our lives again and again, how the Lord restores us and makes things better than before and never wastes any of the trials and difficulties we've gone through in our lives, but works it all together for our good because we love Him and because He's called us for His purpose to conform us to His image. And so I want to encourage you today to really believe that the old is passed away and that behold, everything has become new. And with that thought, I'll take you to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. And just as, I, as I'm about to read that, the Living Bible gives us very simple little description of what Paul is saying here. It's a paraphrase, but I think it's a really uh, appropriate one where he says, you know, I used to not realize what it meant to be a Christian because I mistakenly thought that Jesus was just another man like any other man. How different I think now that he's come to live in my heart by his Holy Spirit. Now I know that when anybody becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person on the inside. And you know, that is more real than sometimes we realize, and that's why we need to be reminded of it. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, He will remind you of all things. He will teach you all things. He will take of what is mine and declare it and reveal it and unveil it to you. So let's read here 2 Corinthians 5, starting at verse 14. For the love of Christ compels, controls us, because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. That those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, just a mere human nature without God. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. In other words, we know Christ by his spirit in us. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, behold, in other words, see it. All things have become new. <laughs> and when we say better than before, oh, my dear friend, it's incomparable. It's incomparable if you say better than before. What I was like without Christ compared to what I am in Him and what He is in me is incomparable. Oh, I am so grateful that the life that I now live in this body, as Paul would say in Galatians 2.20, is not my own, but it's the life of Christ in me. Oh, who loved me and gave himself for me. The life which I now live in this body is a new life. It's a new life. The old is passed away. Behold, everything is become new. Everything has become new. What a wonder, what a glorious. You see, it says in Romans chapter 8, if I could just read you two little beautiful scriptures here. I love these scriptures. Uh, Romans 8 verse 2, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Uh, and I understand because, of course, I myself have had to do lots of growing and still am, that sometimes to let go of the old can be quite a work of grace, <laughs> can be quite a work of mercy. In other words, we sometimes, like the, like the Israelites in the wilderness, they just would not let go of the life that they used to live as slaves. And that life of slavery represented the life of bondage to sin. Jesus also refers to this in Romans 8, that he says a slave to sin will not abide in God's house forever, but whom the Son has set free, he will live in God's house forever. And you see, this is that they would, were delivered by the mighty hand of God out of Egypt, but Egypt had to also be drawn out of them 
And that was a work of God's grace. And the same is true with you. We are born again when Christ comes to live in our hearts. But the work of His grace, the work of His Spirit, is that the old has passed away. And behold, everything has become new. And I guarantee you, our Savior and our Lord for the will of God will not give up on you. He will not give up on you. And I know sometimes, just like myself, you can be weary and say, Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, change me. Oh, Lord, perfect me then. Oh, Lord, conform me and transform me then. Lord, the good work you have begun in me, I played. Lord, don't give up on me, but complete it. And yes, you can feel the fight of the old nature against the heavenly nature. But praise the Lord Jesus has overcome. He has risen from the dead and he has all the authority and power that he needs to be able to transform you and conform you to himself. Oh, that law of his life in you liberates you from the law of that old nature, from that command and control of that old nature that can sometimes act like it still owns you, but it no longer owns you. Absolutely not. Look what it says in chapter 6 of Romans, verse 4. Therefore we are buried with Him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. When you were water baptized, you were baptized into Christ's death and you rose up from the grave of that water baptism in newness of life. Oh, that's why water baptism is so important because it's symbolically so powerful and thereby you make a confession before God that you believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, that He died for your transgressions and was raised for your justification and that as He lives, now you live also through His life in you. Oh, my dear friends, this is amazing. This is amazing. When we say better than before, oh, it is incomparable. It's incomparable. And I am so grateful that there's nothing in me that makes me want to go back <laughs> to what I used to be. Oh, I am so grateful that I am a new creation, no more in condemnation here. In the grace of God, I stand before you not to boast in myself, but to boast in Jesus who has become unto me from our heavenly Father wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Oh, my boast is in the Lord Jesus for whom he has made me in himself, a child of God through him in me. Oh, what a glory. It is better than before, folks. It's incomparable, incomparable. Glory to God, glory to God. Look what it says in 1 Timothy chapter 1, where the Apostle Paul says in verse 30, I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, an insolent man. That means a violently arrogant man, violently arrogant an insolent man, violently arrogant. I mean, the Apostle Paul, it says in the book of Acts, was making havoc everywhere, going into people's homes and dragging Christians off to prison because they believed Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. He used to be that kind of an activist in such a violent, evil way. And look at him now. Wow. Is the Lord able to transform people? Is the Lord able to make it better than before? And if there's hope for the worst sinner, which the Apostle Paul says here, he says, listen, I obtained mercy so that in me, Jesus Christ might show all long sufferings as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. In other words, as a pattern, as an example, that Jesus might use me as an example of what he could do for the worst sinner. And we need to be reminded of this because sometimes you can kind of feel, oh, well, you know, I am, I am just this or that. And you can sing the blues and be so down on yourself and negative, and that is the, the devil 
singing over you with a depressive song, and you need to throw off that heaviness, throw off that evil, and begin to sing the song of the redeemed. Oh, praise the Lord, you need to begin to sing a new song. I am a new creation, no more in condemnation. Glory to God, here in the grace of God I stand. Come on, you cannot be timid about being a new person, about the Lord restoring and making it better than before. You need to be courageous and bold about it. Look what it says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. And such were some of you. Such were some of you. Such were what? It says here, such were some of you, fornicators. The word fornicators is the word pornography. In other words, you were addicted to pornography, to uncleanness, to unholiness. You were defiling your own body with unclean images and unclean ideas and thoughts, and you were being corrupted inwardly. You were idolatrous, he says. Some of you were adulterous. You betrayed your loved one. Some of you were homosexuals. In other words, you had nagging feelings for the same sex. Some of you were sodomites. In other words, some of you acted in heavy opposition to God by man laying with a man, which is an abomination before the Lord, the Scripture says, and women with women, which is an abomination to the Lord. Come on, folks, just because people want to make it acceptable, that doesn't make it right in the sight of God. He said, but such were some of you. Such you were thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, extortioners. You used to make a game out of ripping people off in business and in other ways, but you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of the living God. Come on. When we talk about God restores and making it better than before, and maybe you say, well, Pastor Robert, I'm still one of those. You know, I, I've become a Christian, but I, I suffer terribly with, with pornography, or I, I, I just can't shake it. I suffer with terrible com convulsing desires to be with somebody of the same sex, and, and I, I, I find it so hard because in the world, everybody encourages me to go ahead and give in to those desires but I feel God's Spirit constantly making me aware that this is not His plan and His purpose for my life. So I feel such a battle within myself. And Pastor, I just, I can't help it, but when I get the opportunity to take advantage of somebody financially for my own benefit, I every time do it. And I feel this, this lustful joy that I have achieved when I know in my spirit, it's sin, it's wrong to deceive people. I can't stop drinking. I drink a bottle of wine every day. You're drunken if you drink a bottle of wine a day. And you may not accept that because you've become so used to it, but we ought not to be drunkards, the Lord says. And so you may say, well, that's pretty strong. You mean I can't drink a whole bottle? It's not good for you because you numb your flesh to the work and the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and it shows again and again throughout the scriptures how when you give yourself over to alcohol, it will cause much shame to come over your life and poverty to overtake you. And I want to encourage you, dear friends, none of these things should have any command over our lives, but my goodness, do we need a Savior, don't we? Do we need Him to restore to us a freedom from these convulsing desires that, that so control us? And the love of Christ needs to compel us, to empower us to no longer live to please ourselves. I used to have an addiction to movies. Oh, I'd watch two, three, four movies in one day. And not just any kind of movies, movies that were often very violent and sometimes had images that were ungodly, unclean. 
And I, and I would feel the prick of the Spirit in me that this was not pleasing to God. And yet, until Jesus in His great love came into my heart one night and liberated me, and I can look at you and say, I know my Redeemer lives. He restores and makes better than before. And it's pretty phenomenal that we have such a wonderful Savior that is so compassionate towards us to come and take us out of the grip of what is the old and bring us into the new, to take us out of the grip of the controlling forces of darkness in this world that work within the lives of those who don't respond to the gospel and liberate us from the control of these forces of darkness because you see many people don't realize that when they give in to all these things I've just read to you, to pornography, to adultery, to homosexuality, to drunkenness, reviling, extortion, deceit and lying, that that always involves the work of the enemy, of the devil because it is He who seeks to kill, steal, and destroy by causing us to be prisoners of sin. But Jesus has come to save us from our sin. And it says here in Ephesians chapter 2, explaining what I just said to you, you He made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of the world. That's what we used to be according to the prince of the power of the air, do you see? The spirit, the evil spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, do you see? Sin always involves the devil. <laughs> Jesus said in John chapter 8, you are sons of the devil because you are prisoners of sin, slaves of sin. Read it there in John chapter 8. And he says, because you want to do the will of your father. He was a liar and the father of all lies there because there's no truth in him. And Jesus, he came to show the people that sin is not something for us to think light of. No, we need to shun it with all of our heart that we cannot bear any more sin. We are a new creation no more living to please ourselves in sin, but living to please our loving Heavenly Father who fills us with His Holy Spirit day and night. He said, you were walking according or living according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all, we all, Paul includes himself, once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. In other words, by, by the nature by which we lived, we deserved God's wrath. But God, who's rich in mercy because of the great love with which He loved us, even though we were dead in our sin and trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, and by grace, you are saved. When we say He restores, He makes better than before, better than before, folks, it's incomparable. It's a whole new life. It's a heavenly life. It's a holy life. It's a sinless life. It's a life of perfect sonship, of perfect righteousness, peace and joy with the Father that He gives us. And you begin to realize, I'm not of this world. I'm a child of God. I shine in this world with a life that is not of this world. And let me close with this statement here from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. So I say, therefore, and I testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk. Walk means live, your daily living, in the futility of their mind. In other words, they don't have the mind of the Spirit, the mind of Christ. God is not living in their thoughts because their understanding is darkened and they're alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that's in them, because of the blindness of their heart. And they are past feeling, have given themselves over to lewdness. That means open sinfulness. They have nothing in them that makes them ashamed that the way they act and talk and, and what they practice is grievous to God. 
so grievous that he sent his son to bear the punishment of that way of behaving so that he could freely forgive us as we in repentance come to him and say, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. God can only be merciful to you because Jesus paid for your sin. That's how much God wants to make things new. They've given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness and greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. Jesus wasn't like that. If indeed you have heard of him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to its deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Put on the new man every day. I'm a new creation. The old has passed away. I live a new life. It's a life that is generously given to me <laughs> through Jesus who is my life. And he never fails to give me this life and to perfect me in that life. Oh, dear friends, be encouraged. He restores daily and makes things better daily. And just like, let me say this in closing, just like you look at a small child and you're happy, you're not worried. They eat, they sleep, they get up and they grow up. It's amazing. And the same is true with you and me. Have that childlike faith, that sweet expectancy, that the good work your Heavenly Father has started in you by restoring you and making you better than before, He will not fail to complete, but He will perfect that which concerns you. <clears throat> if you need forgiveness because you are suffering with sin, would you put your hand on your heart and pray this simple little prayer after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of all my sins and I ask you to forgive me. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Wash me in your precious blood. Make me white as snow and fill me with your Holy Spirit and with your great love. I'm yours, Lord. Save me. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I know if you've prayed that prayer, the Holy Spirit is at work in you and He will perfect that which concerns you. Have that faith for yourself. Come on, stay in faith for yourself. Keep saying, Lord, I believe, I believe. Read the scriptures, Psalm 138, Philippians chapter 2. Read the scriptures, Philippians chapter 1 and 2. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2. Read these scriptures and let the Holy Spirit breathe constant faith into your heart that your Heavenly Father will not fail to make things better than before. Amen. You know what we do on these Wednesdays is we always honor the Lord with our giving. And I want to invite you to go to the Life Church website, lifechurchuk.org, and there you'll see the giving page. And if you click on that, then there's all the instructions you need to be able to give. But I invite you to honor the Lord and to bring your tithes and offerings and to always keep Him first place when it comes to your finances and that you could see His favor and blessing come all over every part of your life financially and in this world. I love you and I thank you for joining me today and I look forward to see you soon. God bless you.